Maybe I could uh, just do a bit of a soliloquy. Prime off a good soliloquy. Did I spell that right? Mm -hmm. Soliloquy. All right. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Yeah. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> and today we're going to be making sense of life through Lars and, and the Real Girl. Girl. I thought it would be a slippers day today, but my feet are all sweaty. I'm just going to Let's take see. those off. Yeah. So Starring Ryan Gosling. And other people. Yeah. I hadn't even actually heard anything about this movie until you were like, why don't we watch me. Lars and the Real Girl? <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. Never heard of it. I hadn't actually seen it, but I had. How did you know? I just saw it, it, it just, you know, it, it came, it came by, it passed by, okay. you know, I don't know, like, I, God, I can't speak today. How did I know? I, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I found it somewhere. Um, uh, it came to my attention. Mm. I thought generally the was actually really sweet. Yeah, it was. Heartwarming. It was sweet. It, it, there were, it's, it's a drama, really, so there is sadness, but, like, there's, heartwarming mm -hmm. more heartwarming than sadness i would mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. but so basically it's follows lars who's yeah. played by ryan gosling yeah. and he he lives with um in the in his brother's in the garage yeah yeah in his brother's garage well basically the parents passed away and yeah. left the property to them and so yeah. the brother lives in the main house with the wife yeah and then lars um he chooses to live in the garage they left the house for both yeah. of them and the brother says, you, you know, yeah, they keep inviting him to too. please. It's yeah, yeah like they keep but, asking him to come stay in. But Lars, in the I think, because he was the younger brother, and his mother died either at childbirth or very soon after Lars yeah. was born, and then the, the dad died when he was young. The brother left, so the mom died. The dad was distraught, mm -hmm. and he, the brother is like, no, I, I had to leave. I couldn't live in the house anymore, and I now I regret it because I left you there all alone. Um, so that means basically, yeah, like Lars was living with someone who couldn't really care for him. And I, it seems as though that is why he has these emotional challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's why he doesn't want to ever go into the house, even though they invite him all the time. Literally, the, the sister-in-law forces himself, herself on him um, to try and stop him from... <laughs> in, in a non-sexual way. In a non-sexual yeah. way, yeah. yeah. Jumps him. And then Lars gets in a girlfriend, Bianca. Yes. They're, of course, very excited. One, what, Lars? You have a, yeah. a girlfriend because he's extremely socially yes. awkward and doesn't really talk to a lot of people no. and keeps to himself all the time, doesn't like to be touched. Mm -hmm. And so they're really happy. They're like, oh, wait, right. maybe things are getting better. Turns out. And then they go. Bianca and then. Bianca is a doll. Yeah. Not a blow up doll, I guess. Came in a big box. Mail order yeah, sex mail doll. Mail order sex doll, yeah. Yeah, with all of the. Accoutement. Accoutement. <laughs> of of uh, what you would expect of a sex doll. However, it is not sorted. Mm. He no sorted it. Yeah. Either. He wants Bianca, the girlfriend, to be set up in what was in the pink room, which was his mom's um, bedroom, mm. and says that Bianca is very religious and so doesn't want to, you know, make love. And so um, she, he's, she's a mis yeah. missionary and he respects that they can't sleep together. Yeah. And so, asks, and these are all the things that Lars is of course making up about Bianca yeah. as Bianca is a doll. Yeah. So this is yeah. all he's creating this story in his mind Yeah, as a delusion so, to help him deal with or not deal with things that he's struggling with. Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure. It, I feel like it was to deal with. Well, I think it was to do with it, but then it still wasn't really, nothing was really coming about until the therapist doctor who was taking care of Bianca then started to do therapy sessions with Lars and then they started to make some breakthroughs yeah. with Lars working through some stuff. And then eventually, you know, it seemed like he needed Bianca less. But you see, that's the thing, right? For me personally, I feel like the having Bianca was some, was Lars taking action. The therapist, thankfully, was accommodating and asked that everybody else be accommodating and mm. understanding and let this play out because Lars has issues and this is his way of trying to deal with them. Bianca will be there for as long as Lars needs her. Mm -hmm. and the reason I say that, you know, this was Lars taking action because this guy is socially iso isolated 
and emotionally isolated too, right? We find out, right, as we said, that the dad was um, very depressed mm -hmm. after the mom died. Yeah. Then the brother leaves. So yeah. he didn't really have a lot, a, a good solid support, support yeah. system. Yeah. So I'm imagining that he didn't know how to connect yeah. to people. And that's, that's why, why he's like to be yeah. touched. He says he feels he, like it's it burns when yeah. people touch him. Yeah. Only Bianca can touch him without him feeling burned. Yeah. 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 And so before Bianca, he he wasn't going into the mm -hmm. the family home. But, but yeah. You but know. after Bianca, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I feel like Bianca was him saying, "I don't want to be alone anymore, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to reach out to yeah. people myself." Yeah. So I'm going to find this Bianca girl, mm -hmm. you know, per, mm -hmm. girlfriend. And that's how I'm going yeah. to, yeah. yeah. I, I like that the therapist was talking to the brother and the wife, brother's wife. He's like, well, you know, what we consider mental illness can also be like communication. We look at it as it's always an illness, but it could also be a way of working through things. I think what she means is like, this is him coping, right? And all these different mental illnesses are ways of dealing and compensating for miss things that are missing that yeah. someone needs, right? It's interesting that it even seems like a very kind of, embarrassing thing the brother is like what will people think because he thinks this is an embarrassing thing i guess because humans they understand the need for love and companionship but if it's not from a human if it's from a fake human then they feel like that's to be embarrassing and some i guess it's a cultural thing because you know uh it, it that can be a normal thing in other cultures oh the thing in the oven is done hold that thought okay maybe i could uh just do a bit of a soliloquy Prime off a good soliloquy. Did I spell that right? Mm -hmm. Soliloquy. Yeah, so okay. we can finish. Luckily, the, the town eventually gets not only accepting of it and not putting a, a stigma on it, but they actually get, they they become as part of their, their community. Bianca, Bianca she goes yeah. to help with uh, kids with, I think, uh, with disabilities. And she does like church things and she becomes kind of like, I don't know, like a mascot, but they, they, they really do... Uh, find ways to for for to the, the community to benefit i remember you saying like oh it's the nice thing about small towns people can really band together and want to support one another because the wife uh, says you know don't you say that we don't help you like we've been doing everything everyone the reason why bianca is so busy and you don't have time for bianca anymore is because everyone wants to support you so much in this relationship you've you have with this with bianca that uh we're all trying to find ways to uh to make her you know, feel welcome and yeah. alive. So don't you say that uh, we we don't we don't support you. Yeah. Now it could and easily have been the other way where he was ostracized and sent out of town. It's interesting that uh, that that is something that because then at one point during like a church meeting, I think uh, they're all like, I don't know if we can just have him bring her to church and act normal. Then the one woman was there and she's like, well, pointing out basically everyone else's idiosyncrasies and and quirks, saying like. Your cousin does this. You were, this person's a klepto. This person does things with the, what I can't remember with animals yeah. or has these weird habits or hobbies. So you know everyone's got their thing. Whatever gets you through the night, and that really is kind of you know yeah what it is. Small towns are more likely to be open and understanding, and just because of how close everybody is to each other, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody knows that Lars experienced this thing with the mom. Yeah. They know that the kids, um, you know, these two brothers, their parents died very early. And so I think there is an element of understanding that, okay, this guy probably has issues because the whole time he doesn't let people touch, um, touch him. I think there is that awareness, right? And so whoever finds out that Lars has Bianca, they'll call ahead. Okay, Lars has this new girlfriend and it's a sex doll. So just pretend like it's a, you know, she's a person and they do. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that's something that, that you could get in a, in big, in a city, right? Because people are just much more individualistic there. Yeah. Respect for people's quirks can, can be contagious to other people. And then everyone eventually, you know, doesn't find it a big deal anymore. And then they all get sad when Bianca dies. dies. Yeah. When, when he doesn't need, yeah. she doesn't, when he moves on and, and doesn't need that yeah. device anymore. At one point, once the therapist basically almost just starts doing therapy sessions with them, first kind of edges her way in by being like, oh, well, we're doing tests on Bianca, but why don't you and I hang out for a little bit and we'll talk. Then he ended up just coming in basically to do therapy sessions. So it's never anything that is stated as a therapy session. It's yeah. just the doctor trying to 
figure out, yeah. you know, what's going on, how you feel. Mm -hmm. And that's when it comes out that yeah. he doesn't like things like know. being touched yeah. and it burns when people touch him except Bianca. And why yeah. do you feel like that? She talks about at one point being painfully lonely. I can't remember her husband passed away. And she was like, sometimes I'm so lonely that I can't remember how to spell my name. I, I like that, that line, though. I, I just like that, you know, um, everyone deals with that stuff. Yeah, I think the thing that was really good about it, the therapist is, I mean, the doctor, you know, because she's not actually a, a, a therapist. She's um, she's a GP, it looks uh -huh. like. Yeah. That line was really good because um, it is, it made her vulnerable. I think that there is definitely a big case to be made for being vulnerable to, mm -hmm. with each other because people struggle to open up. And so in order, if you really want someone who is Tr struggling like that to open up if you want to give them support you have to be vulnerable every single relationship that is close is built on vulnerability at the end of the day you know if someone is willing to open up more to you then you're more willing to open up and the more you do that the closer you get the more trust you build that kind of thing and so when she does that Lars kind of warms up to her and starts talking about his own personal experiences I think, I think people can bond very quickly in that way by opening up opening up opening up opening up about this person and they open up and they open up but I think that's also just as quickly, people can then distance that way. When people start to close down, people start to close down, people start to close down, you know what I mean? Because that's kind of what then causes relationships to fall apart, is the opposite. Yeah. It's just, for whatever reason, people don't share the way they used to, and then the other person shares less, and the other person shares less, and then you get to a point where it's like, no one feels comfortable sharing anything. And But yeah, and I like the part where, I think from one of the suggestions that the therapist gives Lars, she's like, why don't you ask your brother about, because uh, it seems like you struggle with feeling like you're an adult or you're not really sure what it's like to, what it means to be a man or be an adult. Why don't you ask your brother? And then he, Lars, kind of was like, oh, my therapist suggested that I ask you, you know, if you have an answer for me. And, and it was, so I think it was like, it was basically like, you know, well, what is it to be an adult? But he asked him, like, what does it mean to be a man? How do you know? How do you like know when says, you're a man? Yeah, because what he says, which I really liked, he yeah. talks about how in other cultures you have rites of passage, yeah. right? Is the bar mitzvah, it's thir what, you're mm. 13, right? Yeah. I hope I'm not okay. messing Around up here. That age. But a kid becomes a man, I think it's at 13, and it's just kind of like some kind of initiation. And obviously with other cultures, they, are, mm. they, are, they do go through like initiation school yeah. and stuff like that. You get and you, there are le le lessons that you that are learned mm -hmm. or teachings that you yeah. you gain from that experience yeah. and yeah and so um, he asked the brother then well you know how do we know because we don't have those things yeah um, how do we know and he and the brother himself actually struggles to respond mm -hmm. to yeah because there is no yeah. real defined way I like at first he's he he goes to uh, maybe sex or maybe Lars even suggested it and then he's just like yeah I mean I guess. And he yeah. kind of goes with it at first, but then he ends up, like, as yeah. he thinks about it. I really like that because, again, that does feel kind of like the go-to for especially a society, a culture, like a Western culture, where there really isn't much in terms of initiation. You kind of go through, like, grade school, high school. There's, there's school grade levels, but other than that, there's no real, okay, now you're a man. There's a distinct change. And so for a lot of people, I think they feel like, well, what is the distinct change from being a kid to being not a kid? And you're like, I guess the most impactful thing is the first time you have sex or something like that, right? But then when he, think, he thinks about it, he's like, oh, that doesn't really fit. That's not really a satisfying answer. And yeah. I don't think it is. And, and I liked his answer eventually where he kind of comes around to this, like, it's like responsibility. You get to this point where you realize, like, for instance, like doing things that you don't want to do because you know it's right for other people that in your life or generally kind of respecting, respecting relationships, relationships not thinking cheating about on other your people. wife. Yeah, not cheating on your wife, <laughs> thinking about other people versus always just, you know, thinking about yourself and thinking about community and other people and your family and putting your family first and things like that. And I just like that whole thing because also not only is it kind of, a nice scene with the brother who up to that point for the most part was kind of like very against playing along with Lars's delusion. Yeah. Yeah. I also just think that that was a really well put together way of if you did ask someone in like a North American kind of, you know, culture, like what is it to be a man? How do you know? That's probably kind of the, the evil, you know, where your, how your mind would work trying to figure it out is first you're like, I don't know. A lot of people put a lot of emphasis on sex and there's this, there's a stigma against still being a virgin if you're a guy. You know, it feels like, oh, well, there is, I think that's why there's so much pressure for guys. It's like, well, then I guess you're not a man yet until you, you know. But then when you think about it, you're like, especially when you get, you when you're more sexually active, you're like, it doesn't even feel like a big deal anymore. So you're like, 
then yeah, I can't really say that that was the thing because did I really feel that different after? Yeah. Not really. There has to be something else that really starts to make you feel more, yeah, more grown up. When he asked that, I did feel really sad for him because I was just thinking about the lack of guidance he had, you know, um, uh, growing, up, growing up and developing into an adult. Bianca was his effort to try and to figure out how to navigate um, adult relationships. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, how little kids have an imaginary friend or they have like a teddy bear that they talk to. That kid is learning how to form relationships, mm. right? Like with, with something that they love. Obviously, when you're a kid, those things are kind of much more accepted. And it's an easier way to, it's a very safe way to form a relationship because there's no talking back. Whatever kind of engagement happens between Lars and Bianca, it is determined by Lars, right? And so it has that really great safe space for him where he can develop and nurture a relationship or learn how to nurture relationships without actually having to expose himself to people, which is something that he's afraid of, but wants to be able to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so Bianca serves as this kind of like conduit, I guess, yeah. you know, his little starter pack for human relationships. At the end of the day, because of his relationship, he's going out much more. People are talking to him much more, asking him, mm -hmm. hey, what's going on? Who, what's she like or whatever? And he's explaining much more. Yeah. These are things that he wasn't doing before. So yeah, like when he when he asked the brother that, I did feel kind of sad for this guy, you know, just thinking about his history, his loneliness that he must have ex um, experienced and just that neglect that he went through, which the brother does say, you know, I'm really sorry for leaving you. I completely abandoned you. I just was thinking of myself i wanted to leave our dad was just so difficult was in so much pain and was ho so hard to um so hard to live with yeah. and so i had to leave but i didn't think about how that would affect you you know it's always in your head your your self-definition or your perspective of yourself there was a girl that works with him that is into him the entire movie and he even kind of no you know in some ways he also has some interest which we but, only find out yeah. after he dates Bianca. Yeah. His, after Bianca. Yeah. Before that, we thought he wasn't interested. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the thing is in when you have that certain self-image where either he just doesn't believe or doesn't trust or doesn't understand this person who clearly, like, very, almost, like, aggressively, visibly is into him, wants yeah. to hang out with him, wants to ask him, you know, that kind of... But it's still, whether, it, you know, it just, it won't enter in because there's... There's, there's so much, and then it can confuse people. You're like, oh, but you seem like a very sweet, I don't know, good looking guy. We, we know each other. We work together. What's the issue? But like yeah. in his mind, it's, it's, it, his reality is completely different about who, how people see him or how he sees himself. I think the main challenge isn't necessarily that he doesn't want to interact with people. It's just more so he doesn't know how to do it. And so whenever you see him acting in a way that's, it look, that looks like it's, re it's rejecting the person. It's just, I think, a, a form of paralysis. Mm -hmm. And I really say this because I used to be extremely shy. Like, I I really still am. But I learned how to act like I'm not shy. Because a lot of times when people see notice that you're shy, like, let's say you're in a sh social setting, they'll be like, oh, come on. What's going on? Be comfortable. Be loose. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We're all, we're all you know, friends yeah. here. But they don't realize that that actually makes it worse. Mm -hmm. That never helped me. When people would do that, yeah. they would it would just make me even worse like yeah. and and just kind of I wouldn't be able to speak yeah. and then I'd go home and I'd be like why didn't I just why couldn't I just say that you know and I'd be thinking of all the things that I wish I would have said yeah. and how the conversation might have gone if I would said them yeah. but yeah like I can relate in that way it's not because I didn't want to interact with people it was just that I was very shy and I didn't know how to you know like it, it, it was it was hard for me to just you know yeah. <laughs> talk yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i think that's basically that's really what what's happening with lars then you start to see what's really going on in, in lars's head you start to see that oh she actually does like this girl mm -hmm. um that keeps p pursuing him because then she starts dating and he gets jealous and you know he doesn't like the fact that she's dating mm -hmm. and then invites her for a bowling date and even though he's like, you know, I, a man doesn't cheat on his woman, as the brother has said. So I'm not going to, don't expect that anything's going to happen. I'm still with Bianca. Yeah. He then shakes her hand and mm -hmm. he doesn't. He doesn't get the, yeah. he, he feels comfortable. He feels yeah. comfortable, which is, you can see in it with his facial expression that, oh wait, he's kind of shocked the fact yeah. that he's wanting, he's reaching out to touch her. Yeah. And he doesn't feel like it burns as he yeah. said before that yeah. it does. Which I think yeah. is what started him to feel that he doesn't need Bianca as much. So then 
she starts to get sick. Sick, she yeah. She passes away, and then at the funeral. But it, it isn't like a too soon kind of thing because yeah. really, as much as they then play it off as Bianca being a real person, everyone treats her like a real person, a real funeral. He gets over that that Quick. that that need to that that shield. So then, uh, you know, after everyone leaves, they're like, "Oh, maybe we should go to see go the others." So then he asks, "We want to go for a walk instead." And you can see this confidence and this this new kind of feeling about himself. Yeah. Come up at the end of the movie, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we were watching it and we're like, "Oh, Lars, come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. already, you yeah, know, moving on to the next, part. on to the next." <laughs> I'm not even yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but of course, right? Like it because it wasn't a, a real person and it was just a disorder that he had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can move on really quickly. The thing that I really liked about the community is, you know, some besides the fact of how invested everybody was in. Uh, in this whole thing and how close they got to Bianca. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that they were um, having interactions with Lars very genuinely, like mm-hmm. he was a, like Bianca as a person. I yeah. remember when he, Bianca is now busy doing all of these stuff, these things, he gets upset that yeah. you don't have time for me anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then the lady's like, well, you know what? You go to work all day. What do you expect her to yeah. do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you can't, you know, expect her to just be here waiting for you all day and not yeah. have a life. Yeah. So you're gonna stay here, Mister. I'm gonna. We're gonna go out. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I like that because those are things that I think when people are growing up, you mm-hmm. need those kinds of things. And mm-hmm. obviously, Lars and the brother, their their parents uh, passed away very quickly. Yeah. And so they did never really got those kinds of things, right? Yeah. And so I like that the community was helping them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was yeah. helping him basically grow which, up and figure out. Which is know. what community should be if. For whatever reason, you don't have that in the family. But that's, yeah, that, I think that's a good, ex- that movie is a good example of positive community influence. Yeah. It could be negative community influence, like the witch trials. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's like the other there. extreme. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is a, you know, where community can be a broader family, which can kind of compensate for when there is dysfunction in individual families. I think it's just reminded me of how impactful the way you grow up can be and it just it really just shows you how important those um develop those years you know are it's not one of those things where it's like okay well you know i'm growing up and that's that's it i have food i'm eating there's water and the years are just passing by and i'm mm-hmm. becoming i'm morphing into an adult and therefore now that you're an adult you're an adult you yeah. know if you didn't have all of the things that you needed to have to you know, paving your journey to adulthood, then you're never really yeah. fully formed as an adult. Yeah. And there are just a lot of things that you're behind on. It's kind of like a constant juggling act. It's like, first you take on one, I don't know what you call those things that you juggle, but the uh, bowling pins. And then you take on another one, but you can easily drop them all. And then you have to pick them all back up and then you keep adding, right? Like, it's not like one linear thing being an adult, yeah. right? You can find yourself middle-aged and then still find yourself acting like you did as a teenager, you know, or vice versa almost, you know? So it's mm-hmm. kind of, it's a very, it's a non-linear for sure. <sighs> anyway, I don't know what else to say about that. I feel like if I share anything, it would just be repetition, basically. Ah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Ah. But what do you guys think about Lars and the Real Girl? Did we miss stuff or did we hit all the major points, all the major beats or all the beats hit? Yeah. Um, Either way, let us know in the comments down below. Honestly, yeah, comments are good. We like comments around here. Yeah, share your thoughts and our thoughts or just share any thoughts. Just share anything. Share your own thoughts about the weather. Yeah. But, you know, what you had this morning for breakfast. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, but yeah, until next time, that's a wrap. Peace.